Okay, so we want to create a static tool holder. This is an MT Tooling or MT Marchetti. In the USA here it's uh, distributed by MD Tooling. And if you go to their website, uh, let me bring that over here. You can go to their website and click on online catalog and I'll type in the code here. It's uh, MZK0 seven zero one nine zero five hit enter and this is the product here so it's a six position boring bar holder at three quarter we are going to go ahead and create this one so this is the you know product number that you want to type into the online catalog search function so here it is loaded in in all its glory and we are going to first look at the orientation and positioning. So the z-axis, we want that to go up into the turret. So this is basically flipped 180. And what I could do is just click this top face and basically select align z. Once I do that, you can see that now my z-axis is going up into the turret as it should be oriented. But now the, uh, the, the holder, the, the red X axis is the vector that points toward the main. So I like to always just make it the default so that you don't have, you could always change the positioning and rotate stuff after you've loaded it into the Esprit Digital Twin. Uh, so you do have that nice capability to be able to do that if you mess something up, I guess. But, um, here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit control A or you could right click and say uh, select all right here and what I'm going to do is right click again and say copy and I'm going to pick rotate move and here I want to rotate right hand rule thumb along the Z axis I have to curl my fingers in a positive direction to get to the X axis so I'm going to do a positive 90 I'm going to say OK, and that places the front of the holder facing along the Z axis so that it will default in positioning, come into the Esprit digital twin facing the main spindle. OK, so now we're going to do that again. We're going to do a Control A or a Select All, right click Select All. I'm going to come to Properties, and I'm going to go ahead and change this. I'm making all the MTs with like a, like that middle gray color. So if you don't have properties under the home tab, you have these tabs. You're going to go to home and you're going to go to show hide and you want to select whatever you want here. So properties is the first one or use the alt enter hotkey. Once we do that, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and select these two faces and right click copy and select attribute and pick yellow and uh, change that. Now just to make sure you know what's going on here um, if I disable this what would happen you know you're you're typically going to get that face selected first but if not um, just scroll through uh, until you reach that face and then highlight that face so it just depends on what you want to do uh, this is a nice function down here. This is the selection filter. It's the first icon right after your um, your grid location values. The selection filter lets me only pick from certain elements. So here when I enable it, you can see that uh, basically this is the way that it normally opens up. If I just click here, I could disable all solid bodies and then only turn on loops faces and edges and um, that helps in selecting certain things so for example maybe I want to change the coloring of these little coolant lines I could pick this loop with the shift key held down and when I say OK right now it will grab that whole thing and then control shift to grab that one so you can use the different selection keys and tricks for the selection filter. So here's your propagation. And here you'll see that when I pick a loop, it says 
closed pocket cavity. That's what I'm selected to right now. So anything when I pick a loop that's in that uh, inside of that loop that's all connected as these were it's gonna go ahead and grab that and I'll do that again so it'll grab that whole thing. Another thing that I can do if I just do an F4 uh, because I don't have the solid selected you'll see that when I say no uh, it does not pick the solid or give me that as an option and since I don't have the solid selected that would be this one since that is not selected I can come and just window in on all of these and then hold control and window in on all the bottom ones and I can grab them that way right click copy go to attribute come to a brass color and that looks pretty good so we're just messing around with some colors there hopefully you learned a little trick and now what we want to do is define these tool positions we don't want to load in a tool here and then have to physically figure out where this is so we can do this when we create the GDML we've got six tool positions so let's go ahead and do that so our uh, UVW is located here um, what I can do is come to translate which I have some hotkeys set up your quick access toolbar um, what I'm gonna do is come to translate here and when I select that I can just digitize into uh, any location on the screen so it depends on what order you want I usually start just from kind of a standardization the 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 position closest to the operator and furthest from the turret so I'll just come to the center of that position and locate my UVW there and then what I can do is I can rotate about the the V uh, vector by a negative 90 degrees and you could come here to rotate UVW and say 0 minus 90 enter and then 0 enter and it will place my W vector going into the holder so that when my tool appears this will be the center of my boring bar and it will extend this way out forward and my insert on the boring bar itself will face upward into the turret if it was in this position so if the turret was coming down to do some ID work it would be cutting on the upper face of that ID uh, you know cylindrical revolved surface so I'm gonna come over here I have that oriented correctly and I'm gonna say add a TA position we'll call this one underscore one so TA underscore one underscore one and I, this is tool adapter position tool adapter and then the underscore one is for side one and the other one is for position one so why side one well I have seen people put boring bars on the back side going to a subspindle so um, I'm not really familiar with which machine this goes on but I'm assuming that there's going to be a machine that this will fit on on a Mazak product line that will have a subspindle and it might want to be used in that regard I've, I've seen that many times so I'm gonna go ahead and plan to set up another one so now if I did have a custom GDML for the holder itself I'm gonna go ahead and create an HA underscore one underscore one as well and then I can come to translate that to here so it depends again on how you want to have these work I'm gonna go across this way so this one is going to be uh, TA underscore one underscore two and then HA underscore one underscore two and then we'll just continue on coming to here we'll say TA underscore one underscore three HA underscore one underscore three and then let me show you a new command in this version depending on how long you've been using Esprit uh, this modify work plane you can use this and what we could do is pick either a vector or just pick the little sphere at the center or one of these rotational vectors or uh, arcs I should say so I'm gonna just pick the sphere and when I do that you could see that this thing will just move wherever my mouse cursor goes so I'm just gonna snap it to this new location come over and say TA underscore one underscore four 
and then HA underscore one underscore four and we're gonna go ahead and continue on with all of those positionings and once you've got all of those done on that side so you can see here that we have our list with one two three four five six we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing over here so again depending on how you want to to do this we can come to modify work plane grab the sphere and I'm just gonna rotate this around and we can place it here and then we might want to use like this uh, rotational arc here around the U and here I'm just gonna type in 180 <clears throat> and if I zoom out a little bit to see the origin you could see 180 is typed in I'm gonna say enter and that rotates my UVW so that the W vector will have the tool appear here and popping out toward the sub spindle so here I'm just gonna do a TA underscore two underscore one and then HA underscore two underscore one and I'm gonna go ahead and continue with all of those to complete this side and once we have all those created now you can see here I have T1 2 3 4 5 and 6 on the second side so 2 underscore 1 2 underscore 2 etc and all of my other ones so that is a lot of tool positions but hey if this is a holder that we're gonna have on our machine I want to be able to know that I'm putting my tools exactly where they should be so that's a nice thing about setting up your holders like this is once you're done you know that you could use these with confidence okay so now what we're gonna do is save this out so we're ready to go um, we just want to click somewhere make sure nothing is selected or highlighted so I'm just gonna come here to file and say save as and down here I'm gonna pick holder file and in the name you could put whatever you want this is a six position holder so I'm gonna say underscore ID underscore I'll just do six position or maybe uh, six POS and then I'll do main sub so somebody loading this will know like this triple is main sub this is a six and I'll say okay and now we can go ahead and load this onto a machine. Okay, so here we have a Hyper Quadrex, and we're going to come up and take a look at uh, maybe this upper turret here. Actually, what's that? So we do have a boring bar being used in this program already, so let's check it out. So under the Tool Assemblies tab, we can go up and actually there's an open station right here. Let's just put it on there. I'll go ahead and select that six position holder that we just created there it is I say open and it appears on the station so what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and actually just move the tool from the other holder to this one so looks like this is it here ID bore I'm gonna right click and say cut and then on the sixth position I'm gonna say paste and we can see the tool appears on position number one so this is good we've got position number one we've got the uh, coolant lines all in there and stuff so let's check it out we can go to simulation come to program I see that we have a link issue so let's see what happens there when I say play and we see the tool come in and actually we have a collision so we now know because this is our real holder what's going on on the machine before we send the program to the machine